Hello and welcome to the 27th hobby vlog that I've made. In this week, we'll be going through a couple of different projects. Uh, I've done a bit of painting as well. I'm not pushing as hard in May as I did in April for my painting, so there's slightly less of that. But there is correspondingly slightly more terrain, so Roses Hill gets some love. And also I get back onto the Joan of Arc build. Let me say before we continue that if you're not yet a subscriber, please do subscribe. And if you can see a bell, someone last week said they couldn't see it. Uh, the bell is there from YouTube and it's uh, the way that you can tell them to, that you want to actually hear about the videos being put live. So if you ding the bell, then YouTube will inform you whenever one of my videos goes live. If you're interested, then don't forget to do that. So I'll shut up now and I will drop back to the beginning of the week and we'll go through the projects and I'll see you again at the end of the video. Last night I clean forgot to do a summary video of what I achieved because I was just so tired, it was ridiculous yesterday, it really was, I should have been far more sensible. However, I did achieve and I did paint the one ranger that I hoped for, so that's that. I'm now sat down on the 2nd of May looking at what I'm going to paint this evening and I only want to paint one because I've had a hell of a day as well. I've had a long start, an early start with uh, Rosie at 6 and it's been long since then. So one idea I've got is this Leaping Assassin, which could be quite simple to paint. The other one is this, uh, like, I don't know, pitchfork wielding woman, which could also be quite simple to paint. And then I have the two that I started with the um, slightly different technique for the skin tones that I could also try to paint, but I'm not sure that I want to start on those because I want to be focused when I'm doing them. So I think I'm going to put them to one side. So I'm going to have a look at my at these and see which one I can finish. I'm probably going to go for the Pitchfork Girl because I think that's just going to be a lot easier to do. But we shall see and I will do my best and endeavour to remember to return at the end of the evening and uh, do a summary video as well. So as you can see, I have laid out the hexagons on top of the board and you can see the, how much more space I'm going to have, which is just perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode these slightly, not literally with like, you know, explosives, but spread them out so we can see roughly how things might be in terms of its layout so something like that so that gives us an idea of the rough layout of this particular board and I'm going to have it so that it's nice and large um, I might make it a little smaller and have an area for the for the um, uh, for dice rolling and for cards and what have you so there'll be spaces around the edges for those sorts of things but basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw around this split it up and work out what each area will be and then I can start to actually do the uh, do, do the sculpting. Now the, the, the materials that I'm going to be using, um, I have some wood filler here which I'm going to use and I'm going to be using cardboard. It's going to be very low relief so I'll be building up areas with thin cardboard and um, that will also mean it's a little easier for me to cut out the indentations for the houses. I'll also be using some air dry clay and uh, potentially we'll be using uh, some other fillers um, and maybe some of the uh, Luke's uh, modelling compound but it's going to be a very very basic build I think in terms of materials it'll be stuff that you can get from any hardware store. So anyway I will get some drawing, get my pencil out and start sketching and I'll bring you back in once that's done and when I'm going to start actually doing some creating. I finished sketching, um, didn't do it perfectly, I'll zoom in a bit so hopefully you can see some more of the lines. Top right corner where you can see the ruins. I made quite a few mistakes there because I misread the map, but I've managed to fix it. You can see that I've used a whole lot more of the table than I was expecting to do, but that's cool. Uh, I didn't really want, um, well, I said I didn't want to. The point is having something that's beautiful to play on, uh, and I have space for the dice rolling and all the other stuff to go around it. Uh, obviously, if you have less space, then you'll spread it out less, or maybe even do it exactly to the size of the hexes. But I'm going to take advantage of the space that I have. However, what you can see in front of you is the positioning of everything terrain-wise that you're going to need to have to play the actual scenario. So we have all of the trees are correct and accurate as per the map. We have the shrine here, which is going to be sitting in a little uh, stepped up to 
two and that'll be perfectly plonked on top. We have the ruins at the back and this is the little village. So I'm now considering how I'm going to actually go about doing this. We have fields in this area. We have scattered woodland with a band going up here and over there. We have plains coming down here towards the fields and around the, um, around the village. And we also have plains here and here. Over here we've got a swamp and some plains on the other side of the woods and there. Now between each of the sections, as I've said before, each of the hexes is split up into either one, two or three areas. There's three areas here, there's three areas here, there's three areas here. Um, there's two areas in this one which is actually plains. So what I'm going to do is put a small hedge down the middle and that will be dividing the two areas. Here we've got two areas of woods in the plains within one section and I'm going to do a track down the middle through the woods. That will be how you define it. So I'm trying to come up with some kind of ideas as to uh, terrain ideas that will allow these segment, this, this segmentation to happen and happen naturally. We've got a track coming down here that goes all the way through that splits this hex in half and divides this hex from that hex. So that works quite nicely. I've got another track here. I'm thinking I might have a stream. I might have that as a stream. I'm not sure. But that's what I'm going to be looking at doing now is actually starting to build up some 3D-ness and put in place what my dividers are and work out how I'm going to actually make this realistic. Uh, the cobblestones will be being done with my Green Stuff World roller and I'll be doing that probably into uh, wood filler but I might do it into um, clay and glue it down. I'm not sure, I haven't fully decided that yet. Uh, but yeah, I'm rambling now, I'll stop rambling and I'll be back when I have something more to add when I've made a little bit more progress. Here's a quick in progress for you. So what I'm doing is I'm building up the areas and the zones using cardboard. So just using normal cardboard from a cardboard box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that down now with PVA, weight it down and build it all up. So each of these areas, I'm going to leave the gaps because I haven't yet decided, as I said, whether they're going to be tracks or streams or whatever. But I'm just going to put down each of these areas as cardboard and glue them down with PVA. That's going to be today. So I'm going to try and get all of this done if I can. Might not manage it, but that does include cutting out areas. As you can see here, this circle, that is for a tree. And I'll be cutting out the area for the church and also for the buildings. So that is included in this task. Once that's dried, I can then blend the area's edges with the wood glue, with a wood filler or with polyfiller or whatever I decide to use, possibly polyfiller. And then I can paint the whole thing uh, with an undercoat, which will probably be black because I want the outsides to be black. And then I can start terraining and scenicing. So yeah, I think I've got a route. Um, hopefully it'll work. This is a very flat board. I don't really need to have very much um, increase in terrain into height what I might do is have a step up here and a step up here because on the map this has a little rock so I might do this a couple of uh, uh, levels of cardboard um, down here on the bottom um, which you couldn't see because I'm zoomed in a bit too far apologies I wasn't looking at the monitor so this section here has a rock on it on the map on the in the in the book so I might build this up as a little bit of a of a contour there and have the planes building up to it all around. So I'm not sure. Anyway, that's my plan. Cardboard, stick it down, let it dry, and then do the next steps. So I'll be back when I have more to show you. So I've spent the evening, early evening, working a little bit on the Joan of Art board, which has been a lot of fun. But now I want to get some miniatures painted. So sorry, I'm looking away from the camera. I was looking for them. And I am going to go in for these ones that I've started on the Skin Tones for. Um, now I don't know whether I'll be able to paint both of them or whether I might just start one. I want to do them slightly differently because I'm practicing, I'm playing around with techniques. And on this one, as Brushstroke, thank you for the reminder, uh, has said, I'm actually going to try to rem remember to write down everything I do so that I can go back and, uh, and see what I've done and maybe apply these techniques in a future model. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to get this done. I will try to remember to put the uh, recipe as well so that you can see it. So yeah, let's see how well I do that and how far I get in my painting this evening. Well, I almost forgot to do my uh, summary video. However, here is what I have achieved. 
I'm quite pleased actually. I'm attempting new skin techniques, as you know from some of my other miniatures, and this one I've done in the same way. It's the Gra Grave Flesh Servant from Reaper, and I did do my palette, which I will try to attempt to remember to put into the description. However, it starts off with black red, and then I did a wash over the top. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm, I'm getting quite tired now. Uh, but basically there was salmon rose, there was ice yellow, um, there was the, the black red base, um, and uh, one other as well. But I'll pop that in the text if I could remember. That would be easier anyway than me, uh, uh, than me trying to say it. I'll put links to um, eBay purchase so that you can go and get them if you want. But it's worked really well. Um, and I'm quite pleased. Uh, it's uh, Oh yeah, Deck Tan was another one. Some very interesting colours for skin. But yeah, I'm very happy and uh, I'm going to sign off now before I keep rambling. So I'm waiting for the live stream to start, as you can see, from Top Table. Uh, and what I'm going to do uh, while I'm waiting and while the live stream is on is I'm going to work on uh, the hill a bit. I'm going to do some painting, I'm going to work on the skeletons and try to get this inside bit done so that I can then put the plastic over it and continue because it's been a few days since I've looked at it and I really would like to get this done this week if I can. So onwards I will attempt to remember to report back at the end of the evening but I'll see you again I'm sure for the next step anyway. I had a very brief but very successful session on this yesterday. I painted with the grey on the stones and with the ready brown on the mud at the back. And what I've also done is I've put the colours onto the little skeletal elements that I want to have and also onto the couple of um, weapons that I'm looking at putting on as well. So the sword, the shield and the um, spear up here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to dress this area. I'm going to put the skulls, the skeletons in. I have the sand which I picked up from the back garden and that's what I'm going to use to scatter around and then I will look to repaint and then once that's all finished I'll be able to put the plastic over. So my aim is to just get this to a state where I can put the plastic over. Now you'll see there's a lot of other stuff on this sprue. I'm not using it because well, it's bronze and it's supposed to be an old burial and I don't think that you would have had any things like archery equipment surviving. I'm not even sure that the haft of the spear should survive, so I might just make that look a little more knackered than it is. Anyway, I have some weathering powder as well, which I'll be putting on around the place and other things, so I'm going to get that done. Uh, I might run the camera uh, for a bit as I'm doing part of some of these processes, but for now I'm just going to get myself ready. So uh, I'll see whether I, whether I do have the inspiration to film or not. Uh, either way, I will see you at the end if I don't. That ended up being really, really fiddly and there was a little bit of swearing. So I didn't end up turning the camera on because it was just too much hassle. However, I've done it. I've put the two skeletons in um, at the far back corner. You can see we've got the seated skeleton as I described. He has a sword in his hand and a shield by his side. And along the front here we have the lying down skeleton with the uh, spear by his side. And tucked away in the back corner we have a little bug which has been which is a huge bug, as big as a man, but crawling off into a hole in the corner of the little cave in the tunnel. So yeah, I'm now going to let that all to dry and then I'll come back with some weathering powders and then after that I will seal it off with a clear plastic. But I'm really pleased to have done that and uh, with, with that done and with the clear plastic in then it'll be a case of putting the modelling compound on and pretty much nearly done, just a bit of scenicking. Very, very pleased. So I'm coming to the final bit before I close this section off, uh, which is going to be using these Vallejo pigments. Now these are part of my Christmas present from Angela, so I'm really, really pleased to be able to get some another use out of them. I've used them once before. I used them for the uh, shed build and it worked really, really well. I've got this pigment binder, which I'm not totally sure how to use because I've not used that before. That was one I bought myself. Um, Angela did try and buy it for me, but they never shipped it, which was a bit rubbish, so she got her money back. Anyway, what I've got here is I've got rust and I've got brown rust, brown iron oxide. So I'm going to grab myself a couple of very soft brushes, which I have right here, 
and I'm going to see how well I can get this to work. Now I will run the camera, I'll pop some music on and hopefully this won't be too embarrassing. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get it done right. But yeah, I'm just going to see how it goes. This is all now dried and in place solidly with the PVA that I put on earlier. So let's go. Hopefully you saw that. That was quite nice to use actually. That pigment binder is really cool. It doesn't really seem to disturb the uh, where you've put your pigment, but it does cover it well. So hopefully that will dry nicely. So I'm going to leave that now for a little while. Going to get on with some of my miniature painting, and then I'll come back later and we will do the plastic, which hopefully will work well. May the 4th, and I'm aware that I probably should be painting something to do with Star Wars, but I'm not. I don't know what I'm going to paint this evening. I'm feeling tired and a bit, bit out of motivation. I have a load of Joan of, Arc miniatures, uh, Joan of Arc miniatures on a tray over there which I need to prime, so that might be how I get into the evening, just sit there and prime some of those. And then I have my other miniature which I'm starting for the practice with the skin tones, but I'm not feeling inspired by that one. This one I did the other day, yesterday, it's very red. I think I might either repaint that one, uh, reprime it um, another for another night. Um, and uh, Angela has suggested that I actually prime in green or base coat in green. So what I might do is on this one, I might base coat in green and see what I can learn there because this is very much a, a learning a process for me. I'm trying to explore skin tones. But anyway, let's see where I get to. I will endeavour to remember to record at the end of the evening and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll have something good to show you. Tonight has been loads and loads of priming, as you can see on the tray behind me. And then just so I don't fail and don't paint nothing, I've painted up some 15 millimeter wolves, very, very simply with washes. So yeah, that'll do. I don't need to, uh, yeah, I was very close to not doing any painting, any actual miniature painting this evening because I spent so long priming four buildings and about 25 miniatures. Uh, but I thought, you know what, no, no, let's keep it up. And I'm pleased I have now because it only took me about 15 minutes, so not that long. And, and now I can tick off May the 4th. Okay, a bit later than I expected uh, because I've had a really busy couple of days, but I'm very excited to be beginning the process of sticking or cutting out and, and gluing in place the clear plastic. So my plan is to measure that very carefully. Now I've measured it once, but I'm gonna measure it twice. And then mark out on the plastic where I'm gonna cut. Cut that very carefully, but not along the lines, and then come back once I've got it roughly cut out and trim it down. So I will pop some music on, I will uh, make you watch this in real time and um, we'll see how successfully I do this. I really hope I do it very successfully because this is pretty much the nuts of the build, being able to see inside that little chamber and, um, and everything else, I pretty much know what I'm doing. So let me get some uh, my measuring and everything and I'll get stuck in and I'll put some music on now.
Okay, so that's worked perfectly. As you saw, I was able to make use of the measuring lines on the, uh, on the actual cutting mat, and that will now be able to be glued at the top and at the bottom at the sides, and it will be in place fine, and it's gonna, be, gonna work really well. However, what I have realized is there's a bit of a gap just here. And so what I'm gonna need to do is actually pause a little bit, fill this in with some modeling compound so that it's smooth, then glue this in place, and then I'll be able to put the rest of the modeling compound on. And I've only just realized this because I don't know how I didn't see that little step there. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see what I mean. So the level of this is higher than the level of this. And when the plastic is put in place, you can actually, there's actually a gap, which is not what I want because when I'm painting, that means that they'll be blue and it'll be visible. I might be able to get away with it, but I'm not wanting to rush this. I want this to be absolutely perfect for Rosie. So I will fill that little area in with some modeling compound, let that go off and then paint it with the brown on the inside and underneath where the plastic is and then I'll be good to go. So I've cut the plastic. I'm very pleased about that. That's gonna work perfectly. That was a little easier than I expected because I had the correct tools for the job. But now I'm gonna to have to pause a bit and finish off the, the um, this contour here so that I can glue it in place. So I will get some Luke's APS modeling compound mix now and do that, you've seen it before. Uh, I won't run the camera um, and I'll come back when I'm about to stick this in place. I've been umming and ahhing about how I'm going to secure this clear plastic into place. And I've come up with an idea which I'm gonna try. And hopefully it'll work because otherwise, well, yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use dressmaker's pins, which is probably going to be far too small to see, but they're the really tiny ones. And I've already tried with one, I've stuck it through the bottom as you can see. And I'm going to push them through at an angle, and then they will be able to physically secure it in place through that bottom foam. And I'll also do that on the top as well. Uh, and I'm going to use PVA. Now, this is going to be uh, have more stuff Put around it, I'm going to be putting the uh, texture, the terrain, um, the modeling compound all over it and also indeed down the front and along the front so it will actually be joining. So when, I, when I'm doing that, it will be glued onto the wooden shelf by that point. And so there will be modeling compound in front and all around it to act as a secure as well. But I think the PVA will be, will be enough, it will form enough of a bond, and certainly with these pins through it as well. So it's a bit fiddly, and I've already stabbed myself once, I've only done one pin. <laughs> so I think I'm going to turn the camera off for this bit while I'm just feeding these pins through. But I'll bring you back when I've done it so you can see what it looks like. But it's a bit fiddly really to, to film. But that's, the, that's what I'm going to do, that's how I'm going to secure it. So um, I'll be back very shortly. I'm pretty happy with that. I hurt my finger a few times pushing the pins through the plastic but I think that the PVA is going to hold it fine and certainly as I've said when I build the rest of it up I think that'll be really secure but it feels like it's gluing in well. I did get some sticky fingers on the plastic but a quick wipe with some new, uh, some uh, kitchen towel and water, wet kitchen towel, cleared that off and that looks great. I'm really really happy. So I'm going to let that dry now and then the next step, oh I'm getting close which is exciting. I'll be putting the terrain on and gluing the rock down which is going to go over the top and then yeah it's very very close indeed that stone will be stuck there which will also obviously assist with um with with, with, with securing the plastic in place but yeah getting there very good i can't remember when I last filmed one of these because I've not been very good at keeping up with it but I have been painting every day um, and some of the ones I've done is I've done some 15 millimeter uh, wolves for Joan of Arc that I'm quite pleased with and I've done the dire bear from Reaper Miniatures and then this evening I've put a little more effort into the one that I did the other day I'm really getting rather pleased with my skin tones. All this practice is really paying off. And this evening, I've done the actual uh, necromancer, who is going to be the leader of this particular war band, um, and then a fighter that will also be in this war band, um, and then obviously the, um, the the servant 
is also part of it as well. This is going to be a lot of fun to play. Um, I've also put a bit of time into one that is going to be for a different warband completely, which is the male, um, the musician. Uh, he's starting to look really good. Very pleased, done a different skin technique. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've done quite a bit of painting um, and I'm pleased that I'm keeping going at least one a day uh, through May, just keeping that momentum going. But it's not actually uh, the challenge like I did for April. I'm trying to take the pressure off myself. So I'm not recording as much as, as I was and doing a daily daily log of my miniatures, but I'm, I'm still keeping up with at least one a day. And today I've done two, so there we are. Today is a pretty exciting day. I'm about to glue the hill to the shelf. Now I'm not 100% sure that that is the shelf side that I want upright. So let's have a look at the other side. Yes, it is. Good, okay. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using, as you probably would have guessed, the uh, gator glue, and then I'll be clamping it down and leaving it to dry for the rest of the day before I make a start on the um, terrain and the scenicking of the rest, which is actually not going to take me all that long. So the plan will be to uh, also clad the back of this, but I'll be doing that once I've finished everything and I'll do it with just with black card and cut it out and it'll be, um, and that will then, uh, can then take some varnish and we'll, we'll, we'll protect the back. So yes, that's bare polystyrene or XPS at the moment, but don't worry, I'm, I'm, I have a plan for that. So let's get this done. Let's uh, stick this terrain bad boy down. So what I'm gonna do to do this rather easier than juggling with the actual hill is I'm gonna Draw in pencil line very basically the outline on the shelf. Lift it out of the way. That tells me where I want to put my paint, my glue, and I don't want to put it too near the edge because, oh, well, interestingly enough, you can see the pencil mark where I initially drew the size, and it is very close to where I've ended up. So I'm not going to put it too near the edge because it actually does expand. I don't want it coming up too much. And that should be plenty sufficient to stick this down and it won't move. Okay, so that's that. Put the lid on, which I always forget. And then very carefully place this on top and then start clamping and waiting. And then waiting. <laughs> I do like puns. Right, so that's gonna go there. Nice and square and straight and safe. Good. And now let's get some clamps. So this is currently sitting on the um, cording racks that I use, which are just about tall enough. Just, they aren't perfectly, they're a little bit shallow. I might have to sit it on something a little taller if that keeps moving, but that should be okay for now. So there we are, I'll leave that to go off for the next couple of hours and then I'll be back to start with some of the Luke's modeling compound. This is very exciting. That's stuck down nicely now, which is good. So what I'm now gonna do, I was going to do the Luke's uh, modeling compound next, but I think actually what I'm gonna do is get this black paper stuck to the back and to the side, just so that then I can do it a little bit higher and then I can do the uh, modeling compound up to the edge and it'll be a bit of a neater join. So the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be a little bit difficult for me to do, but it will be fine. Just need to be very, very careful because I don't wanna damage anything. So I'm gonna turn this on its side, like so, and get my pencil and mark out the outline that I want to follow on this. So let's get that completely square there and square there. And then I'm gonna get a pencil and I'm gonna mark out roughly where I want to cut. And then what I will do is I will then cut that out and glue that on and probably with just with PVA, because that'll be fine. 
and then I will be able to, after that is dried, I will then be able to do the Lux APS modeling compound. Now the thing to bear in mind is I don't want to be coming down here and coming down here because I want to do a little bit of a, it's going to be a bit smooth. So we're going to start from there here and this will inform the um, contour that I will be building up to with the modeling compound. There we are. So I will now cut that out and glue it on and I'll do a, a similar uh, little kind of temp template but obviously be easier because it's going to be basically square for this side here at the back and I'll invite you back when I do the next step. So that's glued in, pinned in with the uh, dressmaker's pins. I use so many of them. What I'm now going to do is get the Luke's APS modelling compound. However, I do have a guest with me today. This is Thelma. <laughs> Uh, Angela's out, so I've got to look after the puppies while uh, of rosy kips because they can be a bit yappy. So I'll do a little bit of this on camera and then I'll have to stop because they probably won't like me talking. They normally don't, so if they start barking again, I apologise in advance. So what we're going to be using is the modelling compound, which you've seen me use before, so um, it's not a mystery. I have water. I'm going to mix it a lot thicker than I was when I did the last lot, I really did put too much water in. Um, if you again, you follow this regularly, you'll know that I mutter about it not being too wet and it's easy to make it too wet. And then you end up just with it dripping everywhere, which is what I, I don't really like that consistency. But yeah, here we go. We're gonna mix this up and we're gonna put it on and we're gonna make the contours of the hill. I'm very excited to get this done, which is why I'm doing this again now, just to get this project finished. Uh, and then I'm going to do the line. final touch is actually also on Rosie's Hobbit Hole, which includes teaching myself how to use Photo Etch, which I'm nervous of, and, uh, and get them both put up in a room, which is going to be exciting. So we could do that mix. There we are. Let's start putting it on. So I'll continue doing that and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step, which will be sticking the stone on, which I will be doing very shortly. Um, uh, that's going to be going right here, but I'm going to stick it on when I do the modeling compound so that I can do the gluing and I can actually build up the terrain around it as well at the same time. So I'll bring you back for that stage. So this is going well. Unfortunately, Rosie's nap did not. and She woke up very shortly after I finished recording last time. Bless her heart. But that's what babies do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this stone in here. So it's going to be supposed to look like it's a, a standing stone that was put to mark the burial that's below potentially. And um, yeah, I'm going to glue that down. I'm going to glue it with PVA. Um, but also what I want to do obviously is, as you, uh, you probably can't see from the angle, but there's a little bit of a gap underneath it. So I'm going to put my modeling combat across here and then put some PVA on the bottom and then stick it in. So let's get that done. So I haven't yet done my mix of my PV of my modeling compound. So I'll just do that very quickly. Um, doesn't take long to mix up and getting it to the right consistency is the biggest challenge as I keep saying. So I'll just get that mixed. There we are, so we've got that in good consistency. So let's start building this up. I uh, do it very, very, it's very nice at this when it's not too wet. It's very nice to work with. If it's too wet, it can become quite frustrating and you can end up really not wanting to use it. But if you get it to the right consistency, then you can be happy. So we'll build this up quite high because when I squidge this stone in, it's going to push it out to the final location. And I'll be coming in with soapy water to clean this up. Once it's finished and painted and everything, I'll be cleaning up the uh, the clear plastic. It's been I'm doing quite well keeping it clean, but it's not perfect. Okay, so we've got that. Dry my hands slightly. 
And what we'll do is we'll drop the PVA on the bottom of the stone. Just act as an additional kind of security and we will push this in. And with that in, we can now move the modelling compound a bit of a clean. We can now put some modelling compound in the gaps and that should stay secure. So there we are. Stone in. Not quite Stonehenge, but still. I think it adds to the effect and it is exactly what I was looking for. It's to use two items which Rosie herself gave me, the stick and the stone. So there we are. I will get on with the rest of this now and I'll bring you back in for the next step whenever that happens. The microphone cable had become loose and I didn't notice and so here I am talking away about the task I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is paint this with the same ready brown that I used inside the tomb. So I'm going to do it quite thin. Uh, I, I want to have the same effect as I've got inside the tomb, so that kind of chalky ready look. And yeah, I will pop some music on and uh, you can watch. It's I didn't really say very much, so this voiceover is pretty much what I said when I filmed it. video in that I'm filming it on my camera on my phone and I'm outside because I'm really struggling with this at the moment which is a shame the Luke's APS modeling compound just isn't drying it's very very slimy still and I don't know if you can see but just here this is where I rubbed earlier and if I'm just rubbing my fingers look the paint is just rubbing off it's very, very, very odd. I've not had that happen for a long time, it once before, but I figured it was just because I was an idiot and did it wrong. But I certainly didn't do this wrong. I didn't mix it wet, I mixed it uh, to a good consistency, and it's just not gone off. So I've moved it out into the sun because it is absolutely beautiful here today. What a glorious day. 24, 25 degrees. And I've sat it out in the sun at the recommendation of Ben from Top Table. Thanks for that recommendation, mate. Uh, and we'll see whether that works and I'll leave it out until it dries. Um, so yeah, one thing I am seeing here actually is that this is now causing this to mist up. So after this going on so well, I'm now having some trouble with it. So hopefully I can recover it, but we shall see. There we are anyway, there's an update. 
it sat outside, hopefully it's drying, and hopefully that condensation won't cause me a problem in the future. Onwards. Today I decided to push on and finish the cardboard work on this. And so I did, and I'm very pleased. What you can see is all of the trees are in place, and they are indented, and on top of that we have a space for the ruins, which I'll drop in now, there, so that's where the ruins go. And in here, this area here is where the village is, so the church will be here, and the one of the houses is here, and two of the houses are there. Now, my next steps on this, I think, are going to be to do the village area. Now, my plan for that is to use the, a um, air dry clay, maybe, um, and the Green Stuff World roller to roll out a pattern of cobblestones and then to cut out the shape that I'll need for each of the houses to sit in um, uh, while it's still wet and then the rocking and rolling basically. So that's the plan. And after that, I'll be using the wood filler that I have here to cover over, to smooth all of the edges and potentially to, uh, to cover over the entirety of the map. Um, but I'm not sure whether I'll do that first or whether I will actually put in place the dry stone walling which I'm going to be putting in some areas, not in lots of areas, but certainly here um, for the uh, fields. There's going to be dry stone walls going here and along this line here and where the where the breaks are. So, yeah. So I might I might do I might do the dry stone walling first and then apply the filler, or I might apply the filler and then do the dry stone walling. But we'll find out about that as I come to it. But I'm very pleased that finally this is now moving to the next stage. I left this outside all day yesterday, and it's drying quite well. So I don't know what caused that because I've never had to do that before. I do have one issue in that it is now actually condensing inside here. So first attempt at solving that is put a few pinpricks just through the top. And I'm going to leave that today to see whether that works. Now if that doesn't actually help with this condensation, what I'll do is I'll actually cut this out and then leave it to dry completely and then I will carefully glue, so I'll cut it with a lip and then I'll carefully glue another section of the clear plastic because I did save it. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll do it that way. So I'll just remove it and replace it. But I'll let you know what happens. But yeah, so sitting outside in the sun has helped. But yeah, not sure why that happened. There you are. That was the week. And a good week. An enjoyable week. But also quite frustrating at times. Because I've made a fair few mistakes. Learned quite a few lessons. And not all of them have appeared in this video. You'll have to wait for the next Battle Games in Middle Earth. To see exactly what I mean by that. But it's not the mistakes that you make that um, that summarizes you, it's how you react to them. And so we pick ourselves up, we learn, we move on, and we try not to make the same mistakes twice. So I'll close, as I normally do, by saying don't forget to subscribe, ding the bell if you want to be informed by YouTube whenever one of these videos goes live. And last, but very much not least, thank you so much for watching another Beard Clipper video. And please do stay safe, stay healthy, and stay well out there.